So recently my phone screen was broken so I happened to buy the realme 6 with some expectations and some reasons like a normal customer would. So let's see if this actually delivered upon those expectations. And this is not a typical review because I bought this for my personal use so this is coming out of a normal customer's point of view talking about the expectation versus the reality. So guys if you are new to the channel subscribe and also like this video. Let's begin. So the main reason has to be the 90 hz refresh rate. I mean I was looking at the other options like the Redmi Note 9 Pro and the Galaxy M21 but I chose Realme 6 only mainly because of that 90 hz refresh rate. Yes the phone feels definitely smoother, fluid and it overall feels really good but it's just not reason enough to get this phone. I mean the shift from 60 to 90 hz it's not really all that dramatic in my experience. Saying that I cannot go back to a 60Hz refresh rate display would be an overstatement in my opinion as per my experience. Because I can go back to a 60Hz refresh rate and not really feel terrible. I mean yes the 90Hz display is definitely better obviously but it's not to the point that I cannot use a 60Hz refresh rate display anymore. Just to give you an idea if you ever played PUBG in 60fps and if you go back to 30fps it feels literally laggy so that kind of same effect or that kind of same dramatic shift does not really happen over here as per my experience. If you look at the high end TVs with higher refresh rates although the content is normal and not tuned for higher refresh rate it uses something called the interpolation and kind of makes it look more fluid and smoother but that doesn't seem to happen over here so videos look normal and games have to really support that 90 fps so it's not really reason enough to get this phone just for that 90 hz refresh rate in my opinion the display itself looks good i don't have major complaints except for the lower brightness and the sunlight visibility so the next reason is the modern looks it does have that punch hole display which is kind of a trend these days and I kind of like this but overall the phone has some weight and heft to it and it kind of looks and feels really bulky I mean this is very subjective guys but even some of my friends said that it looks very sort of generic and bulky and doesn't have any sort of character or good look to it now don't get me wrong some people may actually love this design and stuff but this is just a personal choice so I leave it at that. The next major feature that really compelled me to buy this device has to be the fast charging. The 30 watt fast charging is just amazing. I mean I can completely charge my phone under one hour around one hour. So that is really impressive and definitely I hope all the other brands also kind of bring this sort of charging solution. Now talking about the performance yes the processor is kind of known for performance and being powerful and I had to get the 6GB because the 4GB was not available at that time. So anyway talking about the general day to day use mostly it is fluid but on some occasions I do notice some stutter like you can see here on the chrome when I try to read some news feed it does sort of do that stutter you can see here. This also happens in some other apps while scrolling but it's not a major deal but if you compare it with some other phones like even uh, phones with some mediocre processors it doesn't seem to happen so I guess it's kind of optimization that really matters here. But overall the phone is a good performer and if you are a gamer like if you like playing PUBG it does support that 60 FPS and I tried playing PUBG for a couple of hours and I did not notice uh, major issues. The heating was also not much and uh, yes there was some occasional stutter but other than that it was fluid to the most part and the game was mostly enjoyable. So definitely for gamers this can be a very good phone. Now to the cameras personally I don't really expect much from these cameras but it does have that quad camera setup and uh, I'm mostly a video person and when I tried shooting this in 1080p 60fps the stabilization was terrible I mean even Redmi Note 7, 7s or the Moto One Action do a lot better job so I was definitely disappointed here in terms of video shooting and stabilization but yes the video looks good and sharp that's not an issue. It can shoot 4k videos but weirdly it cannot support the playback of the 4k videos shot from the very phone so that is a bit weird. Also in the macro mode focusing is an issue because you keep guessing what is the right distance to take the picture but most of the time I got sort of 
blurry and not so good photos but with some hard work and some effort you can actually get some really good photos. The primary camera does shoot some decently good photos in daylight but the wide angle does lack sharpness and looks a lot smoother. So overall the camera is just about an average one and it's definitely not for camera enthusiasts. One major compromise has to be the UI. To begin with you find a lot of bloatware and some of which cannot be actually uninstalled and not just that you get some random notification from the browser and you cannot actually disable any built in apps so that is kind of a little bit disappointment. I did not see any ads after turning off the recommendations but even some of the stock apps like the SMS actually come up with this disclaimer saying that they require your personal information. If it is a browser or any internet based application I do understand but for this type of applications also they are kind of asking for such disclaimers which kind of makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable. Personally I like simple and clean software experience but there are a lot of people out there who want some extra features and stuff that is offered by Realme so some people might actually enjoy Realme UI. For me personally it's not a very good software experience. Being a lefty I find the fingerprint placement to be a little bit inconvenient. I mean I need to work a little harder to actually unlock the phone every time but it's a very minor inconvenience and uh, it's not really a deal breaker. Now talking about the battery life I use the phone in 90Hz all the time and uh, despite that I was getting about 6 to 7 hours of screen on time with uh, almost uh, light usage without any gaming or stuff. So definitely I would say it's very good battery life considering 90Hz refresh rate being used all the time. So overall the phone does offer some unique features that no other competitor offers in this price range. But yes there are also some compromises like I discussed in the video. So based on that depending on your preferences you can choose whether you should go with the Realme or look at the competition. So that's been it guys if you found this video helpful please like and also subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.